Hi gamers, you're watching the Telcom Gaming Show and might we add that we are only seven more weeks till Rage 2014. We are getting quite excited. In today's episode, we check out Destiny and World of Tanks on Xbox 360, chat to Damage Control Team and their Myonix products, get our hands on the LG G3 and lastly investigate the growth of shot casting from NAV TV. Why don't you put that down so we can talk? Out here in the wild, this is how we talk. Destiny is a game that everyone has heard about, and if you haven't by now, then there must be something wrong with you, clearly. The online sensation will be hitting next-gen and current-gen consoles on the 9th of September this year. So, is Destiny all that it's cracked up to be? All right, this time we go wherever we want. Nothing holding us back. Guardians have been planting beacons here to connect back to the tower. We find them, we can help the city. I'm already detecting a few. Props to Bungie for getting Peter Dinklage involved. For those who may not know who Dinklage is, Tyron Lannister from Game of Thrones. Voices Ghost, your floating robot partner that narrates everything and basically tells you all that you need to know. At first, we were a bit skeptical of Bungie for cottoning on the actor at the height of his popularity, but can honestly say that he has done a fantastic job. His ability to sway conversations to a serious or comedic tone as well as create memes instantly is pretty much unparalleled. Wikipedia describes Destiny as an online multiplayer action role-playing first-person shooter in a mythic sci-fi open world setting. We're not entirely sure how that could have been more descriptive, but aside from being a mouthful, it certainly works. Destiny could also be described as a mix of everything that has been good in many different games. Subtle humor that could take on the Monkey Island series, all enveloped in a rich and expansive world that could shatter the beliefs of hardcore WoW players. Bungie created a fantastic balance in the game that keeps you wanting to play more and more. As long as your internet connection is stable and holds up, you should be able to put on countless hours into the game because there is always something to do, even in the beta. The game offers the players a huge battleground in most occasions and a plethora of tools with which to accomplish the task set out before you. At the very beginning of the game, you choose your skill set and customize your character. From that choice, you head straight into customizing your appearance where you are given more options than The Sims. Aside from the fact that it doesn't really make much of a difference apart from having players create an individual identity in the shooter where facial focus isn't really key, it worked. In the beta, as you head from mission to mission, you so you gain XP and level up. Aside from all the shooting and action playstyles, you can find loot and upgrade your gear and weapons and bring in new specialities as you keep going. It brings an MMO style of play too, with reportedly having in-game raids as well as a bunch of strikes that players can play co-op. Thankfully, this doesn't mean that you need to turn into a social butterfly to play the game, because the solo game is offered to everyone and works really well. As you go around doing different missions and completing goals, you may run into a player every now and then, who will probably wave at you or ultimately be rather friendly. From there though, Bungie will encourage players to team up because the game offers events that players can take part in which will have them work towards a common goal. The bottom line then is that Destiny is pretty awesome. It works really well and plays like an absolute dream. If Bungie continues to go the route that it is going, then there's definitely a game of the year here. And while it is able to keep your attention for a really long time, it may bring resurgence in older games moving forward. Next up, we also take a quick look at World of Tanks on Xbox 360. Raw power and heavy guns are the primal ingredients that drive World of Tanks. An online multiplayer shooter that reimagines what mid-20th century warfare might be like if it were fought solely with rolling metal doom machines. A diverse range of terrain layouts in each battlefield create natural choke points that speed you along towards the opening volleys of cannon fire. And once things get crazy, it's rare that a matchup bumps up against the 15 minute time limit before one side is declared the victor. Getting killed is serious business. Your annihilated tank is unavailable until the match is over. And this prevents you from immediately using a tank that gets destroyed. The upside is that you are free to grab another available tank in your arsenal and dive into a different match. Rather than being a chaotic free-for-all, World of Tanks takes on a deliberate, strategy-minded approach that favors tactical prowess over outright brazenness. Barreling headlong into the middle of a firefight with your cannons thundering, even in a more heavily armored tank, is a quick way to end up a pile of smoldering scrap. Instead, thoughtful planning prevails more often than not. 
Using the terrain to your advantage, you can hide behind bushes for camouflage, use hills and buildings to hamper incoming artillery, and position your tank at an angle to spread out incoming fire and increase your chances of survival. The Xbox 360 edition is a great start, offering tons of tanks and a strong online player base to dive into. Head over to the Telcom Gaming website to read the in-depth review and find out how to get your hands on a copy of both Destiny and World of Tanks. This week we managed to sit down the guys from Damage Control to tell us a little bit about their highly successful MGO as well as show us some of their brand new Myonix products. My name is Daniel Van Flyman. Some of you guys may know me as Gandalf. Uh, this is Hellhound, this is Stahl, and this is our newest member and manager, Cheng. Damage Control started 2001, January. I wasn't in initially a member of it. Daniel started with a friend of his because they wanted to make, they wanted to join a powerhouse clan and they didn't get accepted. And they stopped, they went on their own road and one thing led to another and he recruited myself and we started winning competitions and we started scalping better players. And as it went on, one day we found ourselves as one of the best construct teams in the country. We started there like mid 2002, I think. We won our first competition to go overseas to Korea to represent South Africa as damage control. 2002. It was in, yeah, 2002. We, damage control went over to Korea. We represented our country for the first time in online gaming, which was a big deal. Um, then from there on, we had slight team changes over the year, but the core of DC has basically stayed the same for the last 12, 11, 12 years, where we're now 2014, yeah. <laughs> Leading up to this, we've represented South Africa, I think, at seven events. Most of them, seven times we've been overseas for gaming, for Counter-Strike, 1.6 initially, and now Counter-Strike Go. We've, we've been to places like France, Moscow, South Korea. Yanni's been in Singapore for, for Counter-Strike Source. Um, we've been very lucky enough yeah, to we've travel. Been, so we've, we've basically dominated the Counter-Strike scene for the last decade. DC's never really been about sponsorships and that's partly due to laziness and um, due to the fact that, I don't know, we've never really, we've never really been you know, proactive in looking for sponsors and finding sponsors and although it's quite an important part you know, of, of the rest of the world looking at gaming as being professional, we decided we need to, to have you know, a far-sighted approach to this. So it was with that in mind that we decided this year to open up our own store. And um, it's called the DC Store, dcstore.co.za or store.dcgaming.org. And um, you know, we focused on bringing in specific items which we you know, have thoroughly investigated and have thought that you know, these are the best items to sell in South Africa. Most of these items you can't get in South Africa uh, as an example, we, we've brought in the Mahonix range of products. We sell Zowie products. We've um, brought in, we, we stock a whole number of headphones that you can't get here. We have a, a fantastic range of 144 hertz monitors. So that's actually been our biggest sellers, uh, BenQ 144 hertz low latency monitors. Um, it's a huge, huge advantage uh, to playing with something like that. Uh, the difference between 60 hertz and 144 hertz in an FPS game like Counter Strike is, you know, it's chalk and cheese. So we've been, you know, we've been pretty lucky in selling lots of those on the site. I don't think that there's anywhere else you can get those. The first mouse I'd like to show you today is called the Myonix AVO 7000, and it features the ADNS 3310 sensor, which has no positive or negative acceleration. It's got extremely low latency, and the build quality of this mouse is fantastic. The second mouse I'd like to show you guys today is called the Neos 7000. It has the same sensor as the AVO 7000, features no positive or negative acceleration, low latency, except this mouse um, is a non-ambidextrous mouse. So it would suit if you're currently playing with a rival, or if you're currently playing with a classic Microsoft Explorer 3, this is the mouse you want to get. It's quite similar in shape to a Logitech G500. Today we've probably got one of the hottest new smartphones on the market. It is the new LG G3. Um, this was hotly anticipated and interestingly 
followed on from the LG G2, which was their big entry back into competitive high-end smartphones late in 2013. And in mid-2014, they've now just released its replacement, the G3. There are a number of really amazing standout features on this particular phone. It is the first smartphone on the market with a quad HD screen. So this screen, although it looks like a normal smartphone screen, this screen has four times the resolution of a standard HD screen that comes on most other high-end smartphones. And in, and in addition to that, not only has it got four times the resolution, it's got 11 million subpixels, which make the picture, the screen incredibly sharp and amazingly color accurate. It's also an LCD screen and not an AMOLED screen. So in absolute brightness, you'll find some of the phones are a little bit brighter. But in color accuracy and sheer quality of pictures, this screen is an absolute standout. Watching movies, playing games, and just generally looking at photos taken with this particular device is an absolute pleasure. The other major standout feature of this phone is the fact that it has a removable rear cover and a replaceable 3000 milliamp hour battery. So if you use your phone hard and you travel a lot, you can simply take the back off, pop in a new battery, and you're up and running once again. That being said, the battery itself is some of the latest technology from LG and they make their batteries themselves. And I managed to get through a heavy day of usage, taking photos, using WhatsApp, using all the social media, uh, making phone calls, and generally this battery lasts well into the evening. So even though it's a large screen, high resolution um, device, the fact is the battery life is really, really good. The rest of the phone is exceptionally well built. It is, even though it looks like metal, the back is a brushed aluminium look-alike, but it is plastic. But the way LG have finished it with a curve um, and with the aluminium-like band that runs around the outside, it gives the entire uh, phone a, a, a nice feeling. It feels solid, it feels well built. It sits in your hand really well. It is often best used with two hands, not one, although they've incorporated a brand new keyboard which can resize keys and shift left or right to allow you to use the, the device single-handed. The other interesting thing which you can see on the back is that there are no controls along the top and the sides. With a big phone, it's often hard to reach the various buttons on the top and the side of the device. So what they've done, they've put the on-off button and the volume button just below the camera button. Um, on the rear, which tends to fall really nicely to hand when you're holding the phone and you can use your middle finger to do all that. The camera also has a dual color um, LED flash, which makes for much, much more natural pictures. It's a 13 megapixel camera, which is not the highest resolution out there. However, what it has got, and this is pretty unique in smartphones today, it's got a very, very interesting laser focus system, which means doesn't matter what the lighting conditions are, in the area where you're taking pictures. It will use the laser to give you instant focus and incredibly sharp pictures. In summary, the camera itself may not be the highest resolution like other cameras on the market. However, because of the speed of focus due to the laser focus, because of the optical image stabilization, it is incredibly quick and I tend to get amazing pictures very, very consistently. So overall, this new LG G3 is contender for smartphone of the year. It's super slim, it's light, it's extremely well built. The screen is absolutely spectacular. There's nothing else on the market quite as sharp, quite as accurate as this particular screen. The camera might not be leading edge in terms of resolution, but it's certainly one of the easiest, quickest, and most friendly camera to use. The software is also smooth and slick, and their logo, Simple is the New Smart, actually does work. The camera is simple to use, and there's a lot of smart features built in, which make your life a lot easier instead of a lot more complicated. In today's special feature, we chat to Nathaniel Slabbert from NavTV about the rapid growth of shot costing, specifically in the South African gaming industry. Well, basically, NavTV is, well, first and foremost, uh, a whole bunch of uh, broadcasters that kind of decided to create an organization to provide services like broadcasting of esports, etc., over internet TV, being a Twitch, um, to 
you know, gaming organizations or gaming uh, competition organizations like the Telkom Do Gaming League and of course uh, various others. Um, at first it started off just kind of as a a fun thing between between the casters and we thought, you know, it'll be fun just to try out uh, casting a little bit here and there and, and see if it'll actually work as a as a kind of organizational type of uh, unit. And what we did find out is the amount of interest that we started to gain from the internet community was actually really, really good. Um, a lot of people were happy with regards to our quality and, our, and our, our commentators, how well they actually kind of portrayed the game. The same with the analysts as well. The analysts that we, we get on board to come and kind of explain or elaborate a little bit better on um, on the eSport e games that would take, well, that take place, um, they were also really top quality. So, you know, from that we decided, okay, fine, let's take this a little bit more serious. And from there on, we got it, we got involved with the likes of the Telkom Do Gaming League, and we started to broadcast all the Premiership games like CS:GO, Dota 2, League of Legends, Battlefield, and I, you know, I can go on. But from there, I think. Um, we realized, like I mentioned, that this is a really good thing. This is actually a very good opportunity for South Africans and, and the South African caster base that we've got to start um, kind of explaining, or not, not explaining more so, but to start to show our talents uh, as broadcasters. And within a, few, within a few weeks, I would definitely say the international community started looking within South Africa and it also exposed the um, South African gaming scene to the international community where you've got a lot of professional teams there that get paid you know, to play on a constant rate and they get paid quite a bit and a lot of sponsors and businesses that are invested as well. Um, that's where basically, you know, where we kind of fit in, we kind of showed the international community that we really you know, have a good gaming scene here. Our Dota 2 team, specifically a casting team, is quite big. We've got roughly about eight or nine casters that uh, cover just the Dota 2 title. At the moment, uh, Battlefield 4 is only covered by two well-known casters, uh, Fatso and Sexy Johnny. <laughs> um, myself, I cover the CSGO uh, side of things. However, I've got two or three guys that are kind of training at the moment coming into the CSGO uh, scene. League of Legends, we've got some ex-players and also, um, how do I say, kind of more so uh, developed casters um, in that field as well uh, that are busy you know, making their ways with regards to broadcasting uh, League of Legends. And yeah, we've got uh, Quake Live as well. There's a couple of casters also there. Um, Call of Duty is also our newest title that we've looked at. We've got guys like Fluffy um, that has kind of come onto the scene. Bananas, I think, as well. Um, they also new to the new to the Call of Duty kind of casting scene, but they're doing a fantastic job. You can see most of the NAV TV shoutcasters at Rage this year, so make sure to buy your tickets as soon as possible. But that's all we have for you this week. See you next time. Cheers.